Hi, I'm John Avina from Avina Comics, and I just stepped into the Vectorverse. I am Vector, and this is the Vectorverse. Today on the show, we have a very special guest, Mr. John Avina, indie comic book author, screenwriter, wedding photographer, comic book clerk, dad, and mortuary assistant. Hailing from the windy city of Chicago, this Magic the Gathering gamer and one-time dance-off champion is probably drinking coffee right now. So welcome to the Vectorverse. John, how are you doing today, sir? Good, good. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for joining me. Um, you actually reached out to me and um, had some nice little offerings for um, your independent comic named after yourself, Avinia Comics. Um, so I cannot wait to dive right in. Um, I had a chance to read a couple issues and I am loving everything from the Avenia verse. Um, so I'm very excited to talk to you today, sir. Actually, let me start off. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Yeah, we actually just got back a lot of art uh, that we're approving for new comics. So we're going to have two new series drop in this year. So I'm pretty Ooh, excited about it. Yes, 2023 is the year of Avenia Comics. I can't wait. Um, but before we get into your independent creator uh, comic book origin story, I wanted to get into your uh, comic book reading origin story. How did you get into comics as a reader? So my dad was a truck driver, and I would tag along on his routes with him. And one of the stops was the 7-Eleven, and I went inside, and they had the comic spinners. And yes, I was flipping yes, through yes. it, and I found a bunch of the Bongo Simpsons ones, and I'm a huge <sighs> Simpson fan. So oh. I I grabbed like a stack of them, and the whole rest of the route, I was just sitting there flipping through reading it. And since then, like my dad told me, like they have stores just for comics. Like we can just go to one. And we did, and from there it was just anything I could get my hands on, I would read. That is perfect. Man, I remember those Simpsons comics. Um, I don't think – I don't I don't think they're still – publishing i don't even know bongo's in business anymore because i i haven't seen them in years but i was also a fan of those simpsons comics i'm kind of like you i was a a huge simpsons uh watcher so that that comic um connection that was there also so that that's fantastic and i love that you were in that era of the spinner rack because yeah. there's a lot of people i talk to a lot of younger cats that have not experienced the spinner rack, man, I need to get one for my uh, Vectorverse office here because those bring back so much nostalgia when I see those. And um, I don't see them often enough these days. So I need to order one. I know they got them on Amazon, so I got to get one of those. But yeah, that that brings back good memories back to me of uh, the spinner rack. So that that makes me happy that oh, you yeah. had that experience. Um, so let's talk about what is it like? Because I, I listed off your uh, uh, your nine thousand jobs <laughs> that you've had over your life, but independent comic creator is very interesting to me. So, how did that come about? Because that's something that I think everybody who's probably watching this show is like, I love comic books. You know, I'm a reader. How would it? How would I go about making a comic book? So, can you talk about your kind of origin story of? Um, starting your own independent comic book. Yeah, so I started off uh, screenwriting, making like short videos with like my friends, like the height of like YouTube coming out and all that stuff. We were trying to we we're trying to make it at the same time, so we did a series of superhero shorts called Superior, and it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> it, we <laughs> we didn't have like the budget or the time to really dive into it. But I, I loved writing scripts, and that was something that I just kind of held on to. And then uh, it was right during the pandemic, and I was sitting on cool. all these scripts, and I'm friends with uh, Kyle Higgins, who does, like, Radiant Black and all oh, that stuff. yes, His yes, yes. dad shopped at the comic book store where I worked at. Oh, wow. So I would go, and I would just, like, bug Kyle when he was there, just ask him, like, questions. And Twitter's a really good place to, like, connect with comic book creators. So I'll just go on there, and I was asking people questions, and there's a writer named Colin Bunn who has a Patreon. Oh, yes, yes. And on his Patreon, you can do, like, these one-on-one -on -one conversations with him. 
So that was awesome and super beneficial. And now we're like, we're friends. We talk every so often and stuff about comics and all that. But nice. um, I sent him some of my scripts and he was just like, there, like there's potential here if you actually make it. So I went onto Instagram and just looked up sequential art, like the hashtag mm, mm. and just started digging through till I found artists that I liked and just sent them, um, just kind of like elevator pitches like, Hey, I got this idea for like a mariachi singer with a silver string guitar that fights monsters. And I want to yeah. make something with it. And we just started talking. Uh, his name is Metzen. He liked it. And once you start making comics, it like, once you get that first page of like line art, it's over. Like you're just, this is all you're going to want to do. It's, it's addictive. So from there, oh man, we just started working on it. He introduced me to his friends and like uh, Cinema Muerte and all of our other books just started popping out from these scripts that I had written as potential like film ideas. And they work so much better as comics because there's no limitation to it. And we just right. built it out and Lockjaw has our issue ones out. And then we have two spinoff books now too that are out oh nice yeah so nice. two series of short stories based on lockjaw's time before issue one begins nice man that's like the i think that's the dream of i feel like that's like what kevin smith did with clerks you know making his own film like he had that idea and how do you make it reality i find that fascinating ideas that you have in your mind and then translating them into a storytelling medium whether it's film t television or comic books and, and i think specifically comic books are like the like you said the perfect medium where you can do things that you can't do in film that, that you can't do in television you have that unlimited budget um and there are certain things that work on a page that don't necessarily work in movies or in in other forms in live action so that's now, I got to commend you because I know so many people that are like, yeah, I should do this. I should, you know, I, I have an idea. I can, I can do that better than Brian Michael Bendis or whoever it is. You know, I can write a better comic than that. And then they never do anything. You have actually taken the initiative, gone out, made stuff. And that is something that I think more people should do. Like if you have that creative drive or that creative desire in you, you can do it, especially today with all of these digital things that we have, all the digital tools that we have at our disposal. Like you said, being able to to talk to people, the communities that are available today are just fantastic, whether it's on Twitter or Instagram. That's how we connected. Yeah. You know, just 10 years ago, we probably wouldn't have never met each other. So this is like it's fantastic to me to be able to see somebody come up and just turn their idea into something. So I got to commend okay. you first of all for that. And then on top of that, like I said, I got a chance to check out Lock John uh, Polistero, Cinema Muerte, both of the, those fantastic, just the ideas themselves um, are great. And then the, what you did with the scripts on each one of those, it has me jonesing <laughs> for more. Um, what what is the the avenue where people can can read these comics and check them out? So the easiest place is avinacomics.com. You can buy either the digital or the physical ones. If you buy the physical, I'll sign it. You just tell me who to sign it to. Uh, and they're all there. And the fun thing about Cinema Muerte is uh, a lot of it, like you mentioned Kevin Smith earlier, that thing is like my love letter to like him and Sam Raimi. Like if you look behind oh, me, nice. that's our variant. Yeah for it and it's oh, an evil nice. dead inspired one. Oh, and we have a clerks sweet. one coming out because kevin smith's going to be at a convention with me in uh august no in november Ooh. and then sam raimi's going to be in chicago in august so i'm playing i'm going to try to give them just it and that's the thing uh like if you're afraid to reach out to like these comic pros they love reading comics like, that's why they got into it write your comic, make your comic, and then hand it to them. Put a business card, hand it to them, because you never know. Like, they might like it. They might even just have some kind of feedback for you. It doesn't hurt to do that. Yeah, man, that's perfect. That's amazing advice. And I think anyone who's watching this right now, if you're listening to it, you'll get a lot of value out of that as just kind of 
the motivation and just the information itself of, hey, I can do this. That's a, a great, I think, message for anyone who's out there listening. And for you, I think it's just like, it blows my mind, like I said, that you can just take an idea and create, like breathe life into it. So I think that's where everything starts with the idea. And then it just trickles down from there. So for you, I think you're on to something with all of the books that you've got so far. There's a strong idea. And I like all of those those scripts that you created. Um, it's just, like I said, there's so many storytelling potentials and avenues that you can go down. So I'm I'm really excited to see where you go from here. Um, do you want to talk about a specific title that you have? Do you have either a favorite one that you have? Like, I know sometimes yeah. it's like, oh, these are my, it's like picking between my children. Um, but is there one that like gets you excited when you're like, okay, I want to sit down and write Cinema Muerte today? Like, do you have that feeling or does it change every day? So it changes a little bit, but Cinema Muerte is the one, it's it's about me, my friend. So the main character's name is John. My wife's name is Emily. <laughs> my best friend, my uh, Chris, is my actual best friend in real life because oh, I wrote nice, that for nice. us to start to act in. So I just translated oh, it gotcha. over for the comic. But that one, when it, uh, Chris lives in uh, California now, so whenever I'm like missing him, I write it. And all the dialogue is taken out of our everyday <laughs> conversation. But I have a title coming out next month at the end of this month called uh, Lucha Forever. And that's the one Ooh. I get the most excited to write about. So it follows um, a 90s era wrestler from mexico so he's got the mask actually right here so we made the mask yeah. yeah so it's about a wrestler from mexico city and he had like the biggest wrestling show of all time it was on for eight years he decides to leave it to come to the united states to make a better life for him and his family and pursue an acting career it cuts to from the 90s till now and it's all gone south he hasn't had like a leading role he hasn't had that star power once he left because he walked away from his fan base and now you have to rebuild. So we follow him mm. at an audition and like he's so hopeful. Like he is just like a Ted Lasso ball of pet, like positivity. <laughs> and at the end of it, he doesn't get the role. And just when he's at his lowest, it cuts to like a news report that. Uh, like aliens have been seen flying overhead. And now we cut to this big sci-fi, like, because I'm a huge Star Wars guy. So like it cuts to like oh. this big sci-fi epic about this wrestler. And all he has left is his mask and that positivity and how he's going to take on the world. And he's like a father and all that stuff. So it's all the stuff that I love and all my fears of like, you mentioned I have like seven jobs. It's all, it's true. And I, I'm leaving those jobs little bits at a time. So I'm taking less weddings. I'm doing less funerals so I can write. But that nice. if I fail, then my family fails. So all those fears translate into this book. Whenever you want to do something creative, there's always that worry. If I fall, what's coming with me? Mm. And that's me translating it into this Guillermo character. And I, I love writing it. And it's just I get to write like all these wrestling moves that like DDTs. All these, like, <laughs> yeah, all these like '90s era stuff that I grew up watching, I'm translating now into like he's doing it to like this giant alien with a robot cannon hand, and it's it's the best feeling. This is like I, I feel like you opened up my mind, stepped in, and took out like everything that I love. Like I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I'm actually wearing the. A, an original Boba Fett, like his first appearance shirt. I don't know if it, it comes through on the camera, but uh, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Um, I was huge into pro wrestling, not necessarily um, Lucha Lib Libertor, but WWF, WWE. Like I was a huge pro wrestling fan growing up. And just all of these concepts are fantastic. This Lucha Forever is now on my radar as a, my most anticipated read because this is fantastic i'll send it to you for sure um, oh thank <laughs> you thank you this is like I, i'm i'm on the website and i'm like how do i buy this how do i get this um actually for anyone listening 
is I see there was a Kickstarter link um, and then there's a donation button is what's the best way if somebody wants to read Lucha forever, what's the best way to so, get it? Uh, once it's done in the next, by the end of this week, I'll have the finalized letters and then we're going to print Ooh. it. So it'll go out to oh, our nice. Kickstarter backers right away. Cause we, we actually had a successful Kickstarter for it. That was pretty cool. Nice. And then nice. it, from there, we're going to sell it on our website and I'm doing conventions all over this year. I have one this weekend in Chicago. Ah. I'm going to uh, Columbus next month and then I'm going to Minnesota. I have one for LA next year, hopefully if that pans through. Ooh. So we're, we're working on nice. going everywhere with it. Cause we just want to, we have to build an audience first. Right. So we're, oh, yeah, we're going right. out there. We're doing that. Yeah. And then it'll be on the website. Hey, let me know. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Yeah. And I'll have links in the show notes down below, but let me know whenever you're going to a convention, I will retweet it. I'll, I'll uh, post it everywhere. Let everybody know that that's where they can find you. Cause like I said, that was kind of like the, the model before the internet, it was like, you had to go to the conventions. That was the only way. And, um, hopefully you could get it, like you said, get a sizable audience and then maybe get picked up by one of the, the indie, indie big boys or the big boys themselves um marvel and dc yeah. but yeah that man this is all fantastic stuff like i said aliens robots all of these things wrestling i love all of all of this stuff so lucha forever is now my new favorite <laughs> but like i said you were you were very kind and uh sent out copies of uh lockjaw and polistero uh sent a muerte and i like i'm not just saying this because you're on the show and you were nice to me. Like these are comics that I would give positive reviews to if I just picked them up off the shelf and saw them for the first time, both of them, like I said, it's, it's the idea and the, that core, like, what is it? What is going on in these books that I love? And, and what you mentioned with the Kevin Smith and um, Sam Raimi, those are two guys that I have, really idolized as filmmakers, even though I've never been um, someone that has wanted to create film. It's interesting to me, just the path that they took to get to where, you know, the big time Hollywood um, places that they're at and writing what you know is something that I've always heard writers talk about. And it's like, that's the easiest way and the best way. And that's what Kevin Smith did with his as well. So I think, the I love the idea of of it being you and your friends, and that was going to be your uh, acting vehicle, and now it's the comic book medium. And and I like I said, I'm always trying to promote comic books, and and when somebody's asking me like, oh, what should I, what should I do? Should I go play a video game? Should I watch a movie? I'm like, here, read a comic book. Let me hand you a um uh, a recommendation. So this is, I cannot tell you how excited I am, and I'm glad that you reached out to me um, cause you put me on your radar. Uh, um, you put you on my radar, sorry. Um, so that I, I can look out for all this stuff and um, also kind of point people in that direction of your website. So man, I'm just so excited for all of these things. And um, like I said, I just, I really wish you much success in everything that you're doing right now. You are so busy doing, like you said, <laughs> seven jobs, writing all of these comics. Do you have time to read comics at all? These so days? I listen to Stephen King's book. It's called like on writing. It's like his, it's his memoir, but it's also like a look back on the craft. And he said to be a good writer, you have to be an avid reader. So Ooh, it's nice, one of the nice. things that I've taken to heart. So now I have my calendar of how many pages am I due on this issue? So like uh, Lockjaw issue two is already being drawn. So now I'm going back over issue three and double checking the dialogue, making sure all that narration stuff's figured out. So that way when they're ready to go to three, they're not waiting for me. So one of the things I do is on my list of stuff, it's like, all right, Lockjaw, crank out this issue or as much as you can of like issue six right now is what I'm on. So it's like, do that, read something. It, it just highlighted. So right now what I'm doing is I'm rereading all of Hellboy because I Ooh, love nice. Hellboy. So I'm like, all right, reread Hellboy. And then after you've read Hellboy, go to another series. I like long running series too. So it's just finding that and then reading through as much as I can. And then 
luckily now that they're doing this, people are like giving me their comics for like feedback and stuff. And I love it because now I'm seeing like other indie people and a lot of Latino creators are coming at me now too. Like, hey, check this out because like the names of my books are all Latin. I'm Mexican, so like it's a big part of me. So for me, it's cool because I'll see it and then they're just like, well, what do I do with it? I was like, print it and sell it. Like it's just buy a website thing and just get it out there however you can. Like you're on the right step. So I have to force myself to read though, because a lot of times I'll get lost. I haven't played a game in I don't know how long, but like that Star Wars game is calling my name. Yes, Jedi I want Survivor. To. I but I know it's gonna say yes. and like uh Legends the Zelda game came out. So it's prioritizing yes, right. do the work and then <laughs> make the time for it. So it's it's hard, but it's what I want to do, so it's what I have to do. Man, I I love that. Everything about that. Um I'm also doing that, but I'm I'm not writing comics, so it's like I have a lot more free time uh to enjoy myself, but yeah, Hellboy was a big one for me. Um, did you ever go through Invincible I did. all the way? So Robert I actually Kirkman? sold all nice. of my like old comics. So my Invincible run is gone. I had a bunch of like Fantastic Four, like the first appearance of Galactus, and it was signed by Stan Lee. Ooh. But I sold it to fund the comics, but like I would go back to those and reread them. And Invincible came out around the same time we were making that web series about like our superhero superior. Oh. So oh, when wow. that came out, okay. I was like looking through it. I was like, this is if I were to make a comic of the show, it would be this. And it was just so like that's when we stopped <laughs> doing it. I didn't care because I was like, this is better than what I came. I was like, so this is great. <laughs> I love Invincible. I'm glad they made the show animated because they didn't have to like pull punches or anything. It's as crazy and big as the scope as the comic is. And it's just it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, man, I can't wait for season two. My wife, um, who also is uh, Latina, so I have a, a love for um, the culture as well. And my son is half and also half African-American. So when I see Miles Morales, I'm like, oh, that's my son. So I uh, things are popping up on my radar now that weren't before. But um, I think invincible uh oh season i'm sorry i got i got sidetracked with miles morales invincible season two i really am looking forward to because i've read the comic but my wife has not so she watched the first season with me she was like what's gonna happen next and i was like you gotta read the comic because we're gonna be waiting for years for this tv show to come out so you gotta read the comic but uh she she has not unfortunately had the time she's been raising my son um so that is fantastic man i'm, I'm so excited um for all of these things that you have coming out. And I want everyone to seriously check out Avena Comics. All of these comics, uh, there's not a bad one in the bunch. You cannot, you can you can put all of the comics, all the lineup on a wall and throw a dart and you'll hit a good one. Like you will never hit a bad one when you're going on Avena Comics. This is um, all of these, all of the social media links I'm going to leave um, in the show notes. You can check out everything that John is doing right now. Man, John, I cannot thank you enough for joining me today in the Vectorverse. And I'm hoping that um, as you have more, uh, as you are producing more, you'll come back and tell us more about your story. Because I, like I said, the, the Kevin Smith route and se- even to the point of selling your comics, like I feel like is very Kevin Smith-esque. Like there's, I see so many parallels between you you two and uh, it's it's, I, it's really fun to watch your journey and to watch your progress. So please come back, sir, to the Vactiverse. I'm, I'm very happy that you came today, but I would love to have you again um, in the future as you Absolutely. progress. Absolutely, thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, like I said, please, everyone check out Avenia Comics in the, the show notes. I'm going to have all of the links down below. You can um, check out everything that he's doing on the website, aveniacomics.com. Um, like I said, the um, it's this is a gentleman that we want to support. This is one that we want to lift up in our comics community. So everyone check him out because, uh, as I always say, John loves comics and you should too. 